Rwanda is a land of a thousand hills, a land of milk and a land of honey. With magical sceneries of amazing volcanoes, lakes, rivers and wildlife. But can you imagine this land with skyscrapers, highways, freeways, railways, pay streets and sidewalks? Can you imagine it with modern schools, hospitals, neighborhood centers, markets, resorts, plazas, hotels, bazaars, parks, shopping malls, stadiums and convention centers? Imagine urban living, mansions, houses and apartments. Imagine your home, your city, your country. Imagine Rwanda in the future. Your imagination is coming closer to a reality with every day into the future. Reforms are being conducted in different sectors as a part of the race towards the Vision 2020. From education, good governance, justice, health, ICT and land. Land being the mother to all sectors because they are all land located. And more than 95% of activities happening in Rwanda are happening on a piece of land. A proper land reform is crucial, especially for a land like Rwanda, with one of the highest densities in the world. A proper land reform determines with high geographical precision where each and every development activity is suitably based. It also establishes land ownership by so giving a sense of responsibility to each landholder. The National Land Center was merged with Office of Register of Land Titles in 2007 and started effective work in the year of 2008. It is a key institution set up to implement the National Land Tenure Reform Program as provided for by the National Land Policy and the Organic Land Law, determining the use and management of land in Rwanda. This program is aimed at improving the land tenure security by putting in place an efficient, transparent and equitable system of land administration. Before that in Rwanda, land services were scattered between or over different institutions. You used to have ministries managing some uh, parts of the, our current functions. Uh, for example, the former Minister of, land, Minister of Lands or Minitaire used to offer some, some of the services we offer today. The other services were in Menemfra, others were in the city of Kigari or in the districts. So it was important that all these services were brought together into one unified institution. So, so to speak, the National Land Center consolidated scattered services within the land sector that were in different institutions. NLC is only three years old and uh, it has not been very easy for, for the country to find the expertise in Rwanda. So we started by using um, technical assistance funded by DFID and now we have uh, a number of Rwandese who have come from uh, uh, abroad who has uh, expertise in, it, in uh, urban land, rural land, land administration, land management. When we began uh, we had to deal with the issue of human capacity. Much as we tried to gather people who are working in different ministries and institutions to get the National Land Center started, uh, we still didn't have the required uh, personnel to discharge the responsibilities the center was given. So over time we've been uh, recruiting and training and we are getting better uh, at uh, the skills needed uh, for the institution to function. The National Land Center has other branches across the country in different provinces, east, west, south and north where each deputy of the Office of the Register of Land Titles in those provinces controls the use and management of land in their province. This is one of the branches of the Office of Register of Land Titles located in the southern province and based in Nyanza. I am the deputy register of land titles here. 
I have co-workers here helping me to implement the land registration process and other land services we provide to the population of the southern province. Before, people used to have all land cases processed in Kigali, either for signing or for seeking information. Going to Kigali for land issues was difficult. Now it's much easier because we have agents in different districts. People go there now to solve their land-related issues. The National Land Center consists of different units responsible for carrying out various and important tasks. The Land Administration Unit is responsible for coordinating the works of the National Land Center with the works of other branches in different districts. It is also responsible for training personnel at the district level about the registration of land, GIS, and the importance of the use and management of land. The advanced technology of digitization of the land registry system is called LICE. Although LICE is a standalone database, it relies on data provided by the Land Tenure Regularization Support System, LTRSS, which is another database used to record and issue land documents from the adjudication process. The purpose of LICE is not only to keep information in the database, but to also be able to deal with daily transactions and issue certificates to different landholders as an act of maintenance. Article 31 of the organic law stipulates that each district has a district land officer. Administratively, a district is governed by a mayor, while technically, the district land officer works under NLC or the Office of the Registrar of Land Titles. The Land Administration Unit links the land activities between NLC and the districts. Cadastral surveys, mapping and land registration are the core components of land administration. The new and modern land administration is, is embedded in a broader land information system, fully coordinated and automated, without separation of land registration, cadastral surveys and mapping, because they complement each other and more importantly, they belong together as a whole. The organic land law is one of the tools used to implement the land reform program. It determines the use and management of land in Rwanda. It was enacted on the 15th of September 2005. It defines the main provisions on how land in the country is going to be managed. It is a fundamental law that defines the rights, process and obligations of landholders and land administrators. The land reform program changes the way land was managed in Rwanda from the nature of ownership to the administration of land. Uh, before the program was launched, land used to belong to government. But looking at uh, the need to have more efficient use of land and giving power to Rwandans, government decided in its reform to bestow ownership rights on Rwandans. So that's very fundamental. But all these actually derive from the national land policy. So it's reforming or changing the way land was used and land was owned in the country. The land registration program is a program that has been put in place to implement the overall land reform project in Rwanda. Land registration in Rwanda will be completed by the year 2013. At the beginning, the presence of five local authorities of the village where we are working is required. They work with power surveyors who demarcate the land of landowners. When demarcating a parcel, we use a power surveyor's aerial map or photos. The landowner then shows the boundaries of his or her plot in the presence of his or her direct neighbor. That is when the power surveyor draws the line of separation on the map from the point both neighbors consent. We have plot numbers and receipts for those who have paid. 
Then we write the owner's name as written in his or her ID, ID number, and the plot number in the claim register book. The claim is signed as well as the community registrar and the parish surveyor. Then we provide the claimer with a provisional land ownership certificate while waiting for the final one. The land registration program is one of the programs that are have been put in place to implement the overall land reform agenda the country has. And its principal objective is actually to ensure tenure security for Rwandans. Because when government decided that land must belong to Rwandans, then we had to put in a place to ensure that was effected. And we can only effect it if we are able to determine who owns what land and then give them documents or authentic documents to attest to those rights. So once they have documents, then they are sure they actually own. Uh, and what that brings is that they feel secure. They feel even tomorrow it's their land. So that has uh, lots of other implied advantages in a sense that when people feel uh, they are secure, their tenure is secure, they can invest more on the land because they know they'll have it tomorrow, their grandchildren will have it, so they can invest more on the land. They can use it better. If you ask people to do uh, soil erosion control measures on land they own, they will do it willingly. So uh, besides that, uh, we also uh, hope it will uh, engender the use of land as uh, an economic resource. Uh, for example, using it as collateral in getting credit from banks so they can be able to invest in other activities. Uh, we also believe that once ownership is established and people have documentation, we shall reduce the level of conflicts because we know who owns what. So if there's a problem, we can be able to intervene. Land administration will be easier, will be more efficient. So when I have a case of people disputing over land, I can be able to go to my land registry and determine who is in the wrong and who is in the right. So we can be able to discharge these uh, services much, much more uh, quicker. So overall, it's really many tenure security and also promoting land as an economic good where people increase investment but also use it as collateral in securing credit from banks that they can invest in other uh, projects and programs. The National Land Center also consists of a GIS unit. GIS is an abbreviation for Geographic Information System. It is a system for sorting and manipulating geographical information on a computer. The objective of GIS is to geographically map all plots according to the laws of registering land in Rwanda. A plot is identified mainly by ownership, registration number, geometrical size, and geographical location. GIS is a main component of the parcel demarcation exercise since NLC uses aerial photos to demarcate land across the country. Once we have the aerial photos, we print them into maps that will be used to register people's parcel. Then we send the maps to our agent stationed in different districts who proceed with the demarcation and adjudication process. They then bring back the pencil demarcated maps which are scanned and georeferenced. After georeferencing, the information is given to the digitization agents who demarcate the maps again with computers. We check if no mistake has been made. If any, we send the maps back to the field where the demarcation process is redone. Once we are sure that there is no error, we send the maps to another team, whose task is to enter each person's data onto a computer. When they are finished, they send us back the parcel data, so we can assign the maps to the information of the parcel surface and plot number. We then make a final map showing all the villages parcel demarcation. After, we update our database and finally send the information to the Deputy Registrar of Land Titles in provinces so they can approve the documents which will be given to landowners. The role of information technology, I believe, is paramount. Is I would say even 90%. Because without the GIS, how would we demarcate, how would we show the features, how would we know 
this plot is located here. So, and if I, and then without also the then there is this database I told you the land chain regularization and the LIS. It is all based on the technology to develop it and to know this place is has these features and now it can be used for this part. So you know the, where the forests are. If an investor comes, you automatically find where the type of investment is suitable. So technology to me, I believe, is has a very, very, very high importance. It is extremely important in this institution. ICT is now the backbone of the land registration in Rwanda. So your ICT department and the connection to Rwanda Development Board should be a very sustainable one. I think that's the main goal for the NLC next year. The Land Use Master Plan is to provide a planning tool or a map which shows how each inch of land should be used in Rwanda. The Land Use Master Plan draft was approved by Cabinet on the 19th of January 2011 and together with this National Land Use Plan, a draft law implementing the plan was also approved by Cabinet. Once adopted, the plan will be published and each district will be equipped with a new district land use plan. This integrated district plan will be completed by the end of the year 2011. Rwanda is a, a small country uh, with a high population density. We are now approaching 400 people per kilometer square. So with such a big population, with such scarcity of land, there is uh, a need to have a very good rational land use. So the importance of having the tool, this plan we are displaying today, is to be equipped with a, a tool that can help every Rwandese, every ministry, every sector, every district to know how they can use the land that is allocated to them. The Vision 2020 uh, set out broader visions where Rwanda should be in, in the year 2020, in writings. But what we have provided here is spatially, is locationally, uh, every location, how can we achieve the Vision 2020? For example, in the Vision 2020, we are talking about having a forest coverage of 30%. So we are trying to put where forest should go to be able to achieve the 30% which is needed in the Vision 2020. So it will help all sectors to develop or to, to, to improve towards attaining the goals of the Vision 2020. In the vision of developing our people, improving the doing business in our country, we think that by the Vision 2020, uh, we shall be well positioned. We shall even have a, a fertile, much more fertile environment that we even call the foreign investors to come and invest on land that is assured of security, of legal documents to the land. Rwanda will be among the African countries which are equipped with very good tools to manage land and to manage the use of the land and to manage also the transaction. In my opinion, I would say that Rwanda in a few years will be the best or the most qualified country to actually master the future when it comes to land use and sustainable land use development. My message to landowners is, is really simple uh, and it is that uh, government has made a deliberate uh, decision to pass on ownership of land to Rwandans as individuals. But they always have to remember that uh, even though we own this land, the land we have as, as indicated in our, in our land, national land policy belongs to generations past, generations today and generations in the future. Which means that we have an obligation to use this land properly. 